Huge shout out to Missy Kitty for always letting me borrow her car, especially when it comes to doing comparisons on the DCT to manual model and also premium aspect. All right, so we're inside the car real quick. Um, I just kind of wanted to give this disclaimer that obviously this is a shift boot install video. Um, however, I'm also going to be going over how to do the same install in an automatic or a DCT setup. So for those of you who want a shift boot um, or something to flare up your car, regardless of if you drive a manual or not, you'll be able to do this install. Another disclaimer is that I don't really show um, in the video how to go about it, but um, this right here, this ring on the manual transmission literally snaps out. Uh, you just kind of pull on it um, and it just comes out pretty easily. So, you know, best thing would be grab, kind of push and pull. Um, it'll come out. However, um, just to make your life easier, if you can remove this center console, um, it would probably make things a little better for you. You don't have to. Again, you could literally just kind of snap this out um, to get it done. But I'm gonna show you the video um, in which I obviously remove this portion just to make life a little easier. Once this is removed, it's obviously a lot easier to push this out from underneath. This literally snaps out quite easily so you can get the job done. Uh, so let's jump straight into that. So we're going inside the car. First things first, you actually wanna lift the armrest. Um, as you can see, I kind of already got started. This right here and right here where they connect here, you're literally just gonna sh and yank it up um, and it just comes loose relatively easily and quickly. Um, it took me a little bit of effort just because, let's be real, you guys might be freaked out that you're gonna break it. It won't break, but you know, just kind of give it a bit of strength, pull it up, yank up, and then you're pretty much already there. Uh, the next step is that you have to take off your uh, shift knob, which is literally just rotating it counterclockwise, so towards the driver's side. So let's do that next step. So I'm unscrewing this and this is actually probably easier than taking off the trim literally just a little bit of strength and it's coming right off um, make sure that everything you have including that little spring and uh, bushing you keep together you don't want to lose any pieces all right quick update so once you do that you actually want to loosen the center part which holds the shift boot and this little tab right here um, that's covering the rest of where the handbrake goes once you do that, you'll be able to remove this easily because otherwise, yeah. So, as you can see, I'm pushing this through the trim piece. So now it's coming out and it's out. And there's actually another little base ring. So you could see I removed the outer plastic trim, which is this ring right here. Originally, this was meant to be part of the last video with the bushings, but that went on forever so it's a separate video this is an aftermarket boot i got from um where did i, see, where did I get it from can't well remember she i can't in in focus so i got this boot from in focus uh nice little quality i like it the fabric um you can get the boot from anywhere um keep in mind my model is a 2016 so it has the reverse lockout um that's gonna play like a big role and i'll explain to you guys in a moment why but um, what you normally do is you actually don't even have to remove the rest of the uh, area. You literally remove the center ring, quite literally just this portion, and the uh, locking ring that's within that, which is this. Right now, as you can see, we put the shift boot and we're literally just locking all the little inserts to the little teeth. So we are doing that portion. Um, with the shift lockout, it's actually a pain. You kind of have to manhandle it to even get it through because it's such a small little neck uh, that this right here, um, yeah, it was kind of a pain. Um, I mean, you might have luck slitting it a little bit open and re-sewing, uh, but it's possible and that's what we're doing right now. So it's really not that hard to do the shift boot. Um, and if you want a shift knob while you're at it, you can definitely do that while you're here. Um, but again, we're just putting in all the teeth um, as you can see, it's kind of ripping it a little bit open because the teeth on the boot are a lot smaller than the teeth on the actual ring that holds this to the, the rest of everything. So we're doing that portion first. And then um, the instructions are to use a zip tie. A uh, zip tie is probably your best bet to play it safe though. Um, and that way you can still keep the elements of the reverse lockout. So as you can see right here, we're gonna have to zip tie it really tight, like right there. All right, so I put all the teeth in inside the uh, shift boot. Uh, this is a universal shift boot and it's also a larger shift boot. 
because uh, the R-Spec and the Rally Editions have the short throw shifter. That being said, the boot might be a little longer, so you'll have a little bit of excess amount. And also, you'll probably have little extra places to insert teeth. That's fine, that's normal, because again, this is a universal boot. So you're just gonna tuck it in as best as possible when you put the outer ring. You'll see right now, what I'm trying to do is you're gonna line this up as best as possible with the reverse lockout. So like about right there to zip tie. And then uh, we uh, pull it back down and see how it looks. All right, so we got it installed. Um, I decided to actually put the zip tie a little higher, uh, actually on the metal shaft, as you can see, because otherwise it would look kind of nasty. Uh, the zip tie's underneath here. I'm gonna cut it right now. I just wanted to see, and look, the reverse lockout works perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and cut off the zip tie, and then put the uh, remaining uh, ring bezel uh, around and snap it all in, and we should be good to go. And after enough tedious work, we have the locking ring. So now once we put everything back together, uh, which you shouldn't have to do because if all you're doing is replacing the shift boot, then you should just be able to just re-snap this back into the center piece, put your shift knob back on, and you're all set. But we'll get straight into that um, in a moment so you can see the finished product. All right, guys, we literally just pushed this in. It clipped in completely, just reseated. Shift boots back on. Now the last thing to do is put the shift knob on. So, all right, guys, so as such, like I said, the last thing was a shift knob. We are putting back the spring. Uh, which had that little rubber piece in it. Um, if you ask me what it is, honestly, I don't know. Uh, push down and then just start twisting clockwise. But we wanna make sure it stops the way it should. Oh, there we go. Everything's working properly. And then the reverse lockout, that works. Perfect. So this next segment is the automatic install. And as you can tell by the cushion behind me, huge shout out to Missy Kitty for always letting me borrow her car, especially when it comes to doing comparisons on the DCT to manual model and also premium aspect. I, I love my base or my non-luxury uh, amenities. But anyways, so we're in her car because she has a DCT model and it's really important to show you guys one huge disclaimer is that hers is also a 2016 like my R-Spec. So for those of you that know, there are a few differences between the earlier uh, 13 models, for I think all the way up to 14 I believe, models of the Veloster and the newer like 1.5 revise, um, especially when it comes to the shifter section, uh, some of the tech stuff and the gauges. In this case, it does apply to the shifter. So. Let me show you real quick. All right, so you're wondering why we're looking down here. That's because technically, unfortunately, we only have pictures of the install. Hers is actually already completed, but this is what the shift knob looks like on the DCT, at least the uh, 16 model. Okay, so one thing to note is that it has this little base um, that I'm aware of. All the other automatics have a base, so you're literally going to have to just remove these two apart. However, once you remove this, it's literally going to fall down onto the shift column. They have a clip that's still holding this in before you could essentially pull it off. And on this one, as you can see, the clip goes right here. It's a C clip. Um, I'm told that on the earlier generations, the clip is in the back. This right here is what that clip looks like. Once it's removed, you'll just yank it out. And then essentially, you'll just be able to uh, pull off the shift knob. And then, you know, the rest is that. You definitely want to do that before the next step uh, because otherwise you're going to have a very difficult time. It's just, you want to do it in that order. All right, so this car, I know that I said on the stick shift model, you didn't have to remove this whole center console area. You literally could just do the section. Bad news for automatic and DCT drivers, it is not for the faint of heart because there is a little bit extra work. You absolutely have to remove this because otherwise you can't really easily get this ring off. And there's a few other things to you know note. The first thing that you could obviously tell is that she actually removed the whole section where it tells you, you know, drive neutral and all that stuff. You don't have to do that. That is where that Dremel tool will come in handy. Um, however, I'll explain in a minute. You can leave it on and basically the shift boot will be a little bit like this and then you'll still have the display. But again, if you want it to look like this, more like a manual, you're gonna have to get some sort of cutting tool to be able to remove that plastic piece. So you guys already know how to remove this. Here's the seam, uh, as mentioned, you're gonna yank it. However, the biggest difference on these is that once you do that, you wanna be careful because there's actually a little connector, which I'll show a picture of right now. That connector is what feeds power to the electronic shift display 
because you know at nighttime when you turn on your lights it lights up to let you know what gear you're in and whatnot so you need to be careful once you disconnect this piece because that connector is plugged in and it's rather short you will carefully unplug the plug and then you'll be able to remove this so once you've removed this and you've unconnected the plug um, then you can focus on this it's held down by a few screws um, so you'll want to remove the screws, which is essentially why you, ha you can't just take this off. You'll remove the screws to go ahead and, rem you know, remove this piece from the column. Um, the way that she attached the boot um, is literally just screwing the boot through and having it attached to the screws where everything screws up. Um, if you guys want to do something more creative like, I don't know, hot glue or whatever, you're more than welcome to. Uh, but essentially that's what she just did. She put the screws through to hold the boot and then basically connected it all back together. Now, again, going back to the whole little shifter uh, indicators, um, if you decide to leave it on, once you put everything back together, do not forget to connect that um, connector piece back if you decide to do what she did and you're just removing it all together, you do not have to reconnect that because again, it's only purpose is to feed power to the uh, LED portion to illuminate the shift column. Once you do that, you put everything on, but obviously you'll notice that she also has an aftermarket shift knob and um, you need a shift knob, right? So that takes us to the next point. Because the original uh, shifter does not have a threaded section, you will need to buy a 10 millimeter Euro or European uh, shift adapter that essentially will slide onto this bottom portion. And then from there, you, you will have basically threads long enough to be able to thread the shifter. Unfortunately, she got the wrong size, so it's kind of wobbly as you can tell. We're waiting on the correct size adapter. But once you do that, you'll be able to screw the shift knob perfectly fine and your peachy keen. And lastly, now that you, you know, hopefully have this on all correct and everything. And right now we're sitting loosey goosey on this because obviously we're going to wait to get the right adapter. Um, it'll obviously look nice and clean. Um, we're going to do a product review real quick between shift boots because we actually went with different manufacturers. I went with a company called InFocus, which I love the quality of because it's a nice solid material, but there's a big difference between the companies we went with. So in focus, you can go online, they have all kinds of different prints, different sizes. They have a few kits that are uh, basically made specific for applications, or you can go universal. The one that I bought was universal with lockout, obviously, uh, or reverse lockout. Um, but so as opposed to hers, hers is actually hand stitched. Mine is more of a printed design. So we both went kind of with a cherry blossom theme. Um, biggest difference is that again this is very nicely done hand stitched this has gotten this was purchased by a person on Instagram that goes by Nally notions which I will put the uh, link and the Instagram name right above whereas again mine was purchased by in focus the biggest difference is that the quality is there uh, keep in mind that because hers are handmade and stitched you're gonna have that type of finish as opposed to a cleaner um, printed finish so depending on the design that you choose um, it might look a little tiny bit rough around the edges but again that comes natural with handmade products um, the quality is there I'm not saying anything bad about it I'm just letting you guys know because there's a few people that'll do like crown royal pouches as the uh, shift boot and obviously if you've seen a crown royal pouch you know what to expect material wise so take that you know with for what it is I'll go back to my car right now to show you mine, uh, just so you can kind of get a difference. But again, just zooming in, uh, you could see that it is a hand stitched, um, all done by hand, very beautiful boot. All right, so we're back in the R spec, and again, I'm just showing you the quality of this. So this is done by In Focus. Uh, the other one has Nally's Notions the, or their tag on it, but uh, I didn't want to move with move it too much. Um, so as you can see, let me try to pull this out a little bit. Um, it's printed, it's not embroidered. Now, it does look like it's very nicely stitched, uh, so I'm not even gonna complain about that. The quality's there. I just wanted to point out specifically that um, this is obviously a printed product. I like the feel of it though, it feels very sturdy. I wouldn't say like denim or anything like that, but it's definitely a, a very well-made product. So 
Again, I'll put the link to this one too. You guys can choose which one you want, check their selections. Um, I know that both will do custom shift boots. Um, and also, if you're looking for a third option, Six Elements Engineering also offers uh, the ability to make custom shift boots. And for those of you that are aware, they obviously specialize in KDM products, especially the Veloster. So, uh, might be worth checking all three options out. I'll put links below. Um, so yeah. So guys, that about wraps things up. Um, I'm very fortunate and thankful to Missy Kitty for allowing me uh, to use her car as an example for how you could do the same procedure to a uh, automatic. Forgive me for swaying the camera. There's, it's quite windy. It's sunny finally in California. So um, again, it's relatively easy, especially on the uh, manual because again, that's what it's made for. Um, but it's not impossible for the DCT or automatic crowd. Uh, again, there might be some differences in what I just showed you, but for the mo for the most part, you have the general idea. You'll have these pictures to go by, um, and since you saw some of it done on the manual, it's quite similar. Um, like I said, just minor changes. Um, it might not be for the faint of heart for those of you that want to give it that whole uh, actual manual look. So again, because you do have to do a little bit of cutting, but as you saw the example, it might be well worth you know, doing the extra work. So as always guys, thank you for all the love and support and I'll see you guys in the next video, hopefully with yet another uh, instructional install. Bye guys. Damn you airplane. Okay.